الحمد لله الحمد لله الذي هدانا لهذا وما كنا نهتدي الاولى ان هدانا الله وصلى الله على سيدنا حبيبنا مولانا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي امري واحلل عقدة من لساني يفقهوا قولي امين Before I begin, if I could just request everyone to come forward. Um, might as well fill up the earlier rows first. Um, we begin by praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as He is most worthy and deserving of all praise. We ask Allah and we ask Allah alone to guide us, to prevent us from being misguided and from misguiding others. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive us of our sins, those that we commit knowingly and those that we commit unknowingly. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless his noble prophet Muhammad ibn Abdullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam to bless his noble companions, his family and the righteous everywhere. Ameen. Brothers and sisters, um, I imagine that whether it's in our so-called spiritual or religious lives or endeavors, or if it's in our worldly endeavors. We, for one reason or another, are trying or are afforded opportunities or we see reasons for wanting to change. So, as I said, it could be something that is spiritual or so-called religious, what have you, within that domain or that aspect of our lives that we wish to change. We want to develop a closer relationship with Allah. We want to be more frequent in our recital of the Qur'an. Uh, if we struggle with making the five prayers, we want to get better about that. We want to fast weekly as opposed to just fasting in Ramadan, uh, so on and so forth. Or it's something in our so-called worldly uh, endeavors. We want to change something about ourselves. Um, lose weight, get in better health, get in better shape, um, improve ourselves financially, perhaps go back to school, get that graduate degree, or that finish our undergraduate, what have you, uh, to try to improve ourselves. And so change, or the pursuit of change, is something that is a part and parcel of our existence. It's human nature. And in fact, the idea of change is something that is ubiquitous. It is something that is all around us. The world, whether we know it or not, and most often we are aware of that, but sometimes we're not because it happens so gradually, that the world is constantly in a state of flux and change. And so change is internal, is, is, is within the nature of creation, not just the idea or desire to change, but also change in and of itself. As they say, the only constant in the universe is what? Change. Change is the only constant in the world and in the existence that we have. Furthermore, I would submit to you that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in terms of our cosmology, in terms of our belief system, right? Allah is the prime mover. Allah is the ultimate agent of change. He is the ultimate uh, bringer of change. It is through Allah's will and it is through His irada and His desire and His and His and His omnipotent power to change things. And so, on the one hand, He has put internal within creation or within the created this idea of a constant flux and change. And within human beings, he has put in our own fitrah, our own nature, at times a desire to change. And to, in order to facilitate all of that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has, eter has internalized within the cosmos, within the universe, methodologies of change. So-called natural laws. These are immutable laws that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has placed in creation with regards to this idea of change and flux and, and, and reinvention and so on. 
And these are what the Qur'an, or in the discourse of the language of the Qur'an, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala refers to as the sunnah of Allah. These are the sunnah of Allah. These immutable laws, these formulas, if you will, for successful change. These formulas or recipes for how we, as human beings, if we endeavor to change, if we want to change, how we can be successful. If we align ourselves, our own desires for change, with those universal laws, with those immutable sunnah of Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, فَلَن تَجِدَ لِسُنَّةِ اللَّهِ تَبْدِيلًا وَلَن تَجِدَ لِسُنَّةِ اللَّهِ تَحْوِيلًا That indeed you will never ever find a alteration or a change in the sunnah of Allah. And this is what I mean when I say they are immutable. They are immutable because they are internalized within creation. These sunnah of Allah. And so what are those sunnah? What are those methodologies, those recipes for successful change? Well, there are many. And of course, in the brief time that we have today, we aren't going to be able to cover them exhaustively. But if we can just examine a few of those recipes, a few of those guidelines, those rules, those, those, those uh, methodologies for change, formulas for success, inshallah, we can better improve ourselves. We can hopefully at least begin that process of wanting to, or that, that process of change that we strive for at times. And so, the first of these formula that I wish to speak of is the concept or the sunnah, or the sunnah, excuse me, of gradualism. Of gradualism. Because that is an immutable law that Allah has placed in creation. Proof of that, or some proof of that, is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as we know, right, Allah creates by His will. If Allah wills something into existence, kun fayakun. He says, be and it is. Right? That's how Allah can create things. That's how Allah can bring about change. Kun fayakun. Yet, that same creator, that same omnipotent, omniscient creator of the heavens and earth, when he describes in the Quran how he created the heavens and the earth, he says what? الَّذِي خَلَقَ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ وَمَا بَيْنَهُمْ فِي سِتَّةِ أَيَّامِ That He is Allah, He is the one who has created the heavens and earth and all that lies within in six stages. فِي سِتَّةِ أَيَّامِ Or six days. These aren't 24 hour days, so they're not days like we imagine them. But yet they're periods of time. كُنْ فَيَكُونَ Allah can will all of creation into existence. He doesn't need a day of rest. He doesn't need to do it piecemeal. But He does so. He does so when He creates creation. Why? In order for us to ponder and reflect. In order for us to realize that things have a gradual nature. That change that is meaningful that is profound, that, has, that is lasting. It is change that comes piecemeal. It is change that happens in stages. And so oftentimes when we want to change, whether it's again, that spiritual pursuit, or that spiritual endeavor, or it's something that we want to do in our daily lives, you know, get in shape, lose weight, whatever it is, eat right, it's like all or none. We want to sort of go from zero to 100. Day one, that's not, that's not sustainable, that's not realistic. More sustainable, more realistic is this idea of change, changing gradually. Changing following the sunnah of Allah's method of, or, or the sunnah of Allah in how He created the heavens and earth, how He brings about change. He does so in stages. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us again in the Qur'an, this time in response to a question or something being posed to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. فِي 
جملة واحدة كذلك لنثبت به فؤادا ورتلناه تفسيرا Those who disbelieve, وقال الذين كفروا Those who disbelieve, they say or they ask the Prophet Why is it that you, why is it that revelation comes to you in piecemeal? Why can't it just be jumla wahida? Why isn't it just one revelatory experience and you're given the book and you can produce the book for us on demand, as it were, right? On demand. But that's not how revelation worked. That's not how wahi came to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Why? Or in response to that, that the response to that charge being levied by the, the those who disbelieve. لَوْلَا نُزِّلَ عَلَيْهِ الْقُرْآنِ فِي جُلَّةَ وَاحِدَةَ كَذَلِكَ لِنُثَبِّتَ بِهِ فُعَدَكَ وَرَدَّنَّهُ تَرْتِيلًا It is so that we may strengthen the heart, O Messenger of Allah. We may strengthen your heart. وَرَدَّنَّهُ تَرْتِيلًا And the Qur'an will be revealed in this piecemeal fashion. And so what the commentators tell us is that on one hand, the, that, that the Prophet said in his heart, would have to bear the burden and the responsibility of that, of that revelation. And hence it had to be strengthened. But also, the wisdom of doing so gradually, of, of revelation occurring over a period of 23 years, is so that the heart of the Prophet ﷺ could get reinforced constantly by new revelation, by the revelation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I liken it or I compare it to, take your pick, your uh, painting a wall or vintage car aficionado, right? You have a 1960s classic and you're trying to restore it. So you apply that first coat, that primer, or you first remove blemishes and then you apply that first coat and then you apply coat after coat of paint and you do so in a successive fashion and not only are you beautifying that wall or that 1960s classic but you're also reinforcing reinforcing and strengthening with each layer and that's how the quran was revealed and that is how change occurs it occurs gradually and when it occurs gradually it is more profound, it is more meaningful, it is more sustainable if change occurs gradually. So we have to ease into change. Whether, as I said, it's worldly pursuits or it's pursuits that are quote-unquote religious or spiritual, that we have to be brought into this gradually. The Prophet said that he gave an analogy that he he compared this idea that I'm speaking of uh, with regards to a, a traveler on a journey. And the traveler, he wants to cover as much distance as he can in as short of a period, right? That's what we want to do. We want to get there quickly and we want to get there in the least amount of time that it takes. And so that person, that traveler is riding that camel or horse or whatever and making it go faster and faster so that he can cover greater distance and so that he can arrive at his, his or her destination in a shorter amount of time. And then the Prophet said that he said that neither the traveler nor the beast nor the, nor the animal would arrive at their destination. Because that's not sustainable. You can't sustain that pace throughout it all. And this is why, again, what are those actions that are most beloved to Allah? According to the Prophet <coughs> those actions that are small, that are, we may not think of them as big productions, but those small actions that are done frequently, frequently and consistently, those are those actions that are most beloved to Allah. Those are actions that are of them in the eyes of Allah. Because those are actions that can be sustained, <coughs> that are done day in, day out. And that is how we reinforce that idea of trying to change. And so as I said, we can apply this as a blueprint to our lives, regardless of what we are trying to change about ourselves. Secondly, in, in, in the very, very brief time that I have left or remaining, the other sunnah that I want to talk about is, 
And what's interesting is these, these, these methodologies that I'm, that I'm speaking of are in fact methodologies that, methodologies that if you speak to a therapist or uh, a mental health professional, they actually use these in their, in their lives with regards to their professional uh, 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 opinion or their care that they provide to those who seek care with them. So these are sort of tried and true methods that you can apply, as I said, to all various pursuits or, or aspects of ourselves that we wish to change. But secondly, the second sunnah that I want to leave you with is that if we want change, if we want change that is meaningful and profound, then we have to change attitudes first and behavior will follow. Oftentimes we approach these things topsy-turvy or out of order. And this, this is what leads to what individuals or again, people in mental health uh, uh, the therapy or, or, or mental health professionals refer to as cognitive, leads to cognitive dissonance. Where one's actions are not in harmony or in synchronicity with one's belief system. There is a disconnect between the internal and the external. And it's like a rubber band. It's the analogy that they use is like a rubber band. That you're pulling at two ends and eventually that band is going to snap. Because that's not sustainable. You can't live in a state of constant cognitive dissonance where there's this push and pull between one's internal and one's external. One's internal state and one's, what one's external manifestations of that state. And so in order to be in harmony, in order to have a life that is harmonious, where one's internal, internal and external are in harmony and not in dissonance, is that we must change attitude first. And if we change our attitude first, behavior will follow. Behavior will follow as a result of that change of attitude. By way of evidence, or by way of looking at this, approaching this slightly differently, at a time when the companions in that early community of the Prophet was being oppressed by their oppressors, when they were being persecuted in Mecca, when they were being tortured, at times losing their lives, certainly losing their livelihoods, family members dying and suffering. At a time where that community was in that state of struggle and persecution, you would think or you, would, you, would, you, you could imagine a scenario where that community would be given permission to defend themselves to fight their oppressors, to raise up arms against their oppressors. But rather, in that early period where the, where the persecution was its most intense, what is the Prophet ﷺ doing? أَقِيمُ الصَّلَةِ وَعَاتُوا الزَّكَةِ كُفُّ عَيْدِيَكُمْ وَعَقِيمُ الصَّلَةِ وَعَاتُوا الزَّكَةِ As the Quran said, refrain your hands, establish the prayer, give the charity, He's building a community. And by way of building a community, he's building, building and strengthening those individuals by changing their attitude, by reinforcing internal change, by promoting and reinforcing internal change. And so that when the command for jihad, when the command for raising up arms against their oppressors, where fighting off their oppressors would come, they would do so in a disciplined manner. They wouldn't go into extremes. They wouldn't exceed the boundaries that Allah had placed with regards to even military combat. Because they were trained. Their internal states were strong. And so, and, and if they weren't ready physically for battle, they were ready internally and spiritually. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in that, in, that, in that initial period, in that crucible of Mecca, as, as one author called it, in that crucible of Mecca, was strengthening that community so that he could face the challenges that he would face later on. And so he changed attitudes first, and behavior will follow. And related to kind of the first point and the second point, by way of concluding, Aisha radiallahu anha made a very, makes a very interesting statement. She says, Aisha radiallahu anha, she comments and she says that 
had the first verse revealed, ever revealed, been to give up or leave off intoxication or intoxicating beverages, that is to say to not drink, that had the first verse ever revealed been that, then assuredly, most certainly, the community would have never been able to do so. Because it had to happen in a period that was gradual. It had to happen, or it had to happen in a way in which, or after which, after attitudes had changed. And so once you change attitude, you can change behavior, or behavior can follow much more naturally with regards to a change in attitudes first. And so what we have to adjust, brothers and sisters, whether it's for our spiritual or religious pursuits and endeavors, or it's things in our personal lives, is you have to change our mind. We have to change our mindset. We have to change the way we look at things. They say if you want to try to lose weight, the way in which you approach food, how do you look at food? How do you look at uh, physical exercise? Is it a chore? Is it a burden? Are you in this constant state of looking at dieting? That's never sustainable. You have to change the way you eat, or you have to change the way you think of food, or you think of physical exercise, right? Because again, change, attitude, behavior will follow. I pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us all the ability to, uh, to implement these stratagems of change, these formulas for success that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has placed in our faith, and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless this community individually and collectively. Aqulu khawli hazza wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum wa akhiru damana alhamdulillah wa akhiru alameen. Inna alhamdulillah nahmaduhu wa nasta'inuhu wa nasta'inuhu wa na'udhu lahi min shuhubi anfusina. ومن سيئات أعمالي ما يهدي الله فلا مضل له وما يضل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وآله وصحبه وسلم يقول الله سبحانه وتعالى في القرآن الكريم يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سليلا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يؤتي الله ورسوله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما أما بعد إن الله وملائكة يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد وبارك وسلم ربنا لا تواخذنا إن نسينا أو أخطأنا ربنا ولا تحمل علينا إسرا كما حملته على الذين من قبلنا ربنا ولا تحملنا ما لا تواخذ لنا بوعف عنا واغفر لنا وارحمنا أنت مولانا فانصرنا على القوم الكافرين يا مقلب القلوب ثبت قلوبا على دينك اللهم إنا نسألك رضاك بالجنة ونعوذ بك من صفتك والنار سبحان ربك رب العزة يا ما يسفون والسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين وعقيم